Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create some magic with the appearance panel in Illustrator. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's have a look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. What we're going to do is to create this button here as a vector shape and it's all done in the appearance panel. So all of these effects that are applied to this button are in this appearance panel. Once we've done that, we're going to add it as a symbol so that we can then spray it into our document. We can resize the buttons and recolor them from there. But basically the tutorial is about creating this first button so that you can then start working with it. Before I created this button effect, I've started off with a couple of gradients. Firstly, I made a blue to slightly darker blue gradient and then I created one that which is the exact reverse of that. And finally, a gradient that was a little bit darker than both of these with dark on the left and lighter on the right. So now we're ready to get started. I'm going to target this first gradient, the one that is the blue to light blue and the dark blue is on the left or the darker of the colors is on the left. I'm going to choose the ellipse tool, hold down the shift key as I drag out a circle here and it's filled with the gradient we want to have it filled with. I don't want a stroke so right now I'm going to turn the stroke off. Now let's go to the appearance panel which is just window and then appearance and everything is going to be built from the appearance panel. I need to create a duplicate of this fill in the appearance panel so I'm going to click on it and drag and drop it onto the duplicate icon and that just makes a second copy of it. Now this one I need to be filled with the reverse of that gradient so I'm just going to click and fill it with the reverse. So we've got two fills on top of each other in the appearance panel. I just want this circle to be a bit smaller and I can do that by just transforming this fill. So I'm going to target the fill and go Effect, Distort and Transform, Transform. And I want to bring this in slightly and I'm thinking probably about 85% is going to be what I want and I want it to be centered on the circle. So this is looking pretty good to me so I'm going to click OK. And now we have two fills. I want to align around the area that is joining these two fills. So I'm actually going to use the stroke to do this. I'm going to target the stroke and I'm going to use the gradient that I created, this very dark gradient, much darker than the fill is. Now I'm going to increase the weight of this stroke so that you can see that it's on the outside of the shape and you can see that it's darker on the left and lighter on the right. I just want to move it in and I can move it in again in the appearance panel targeting the stroke layer. I'm going to choose effect and this time I'm going to choose path and offset path. When I turn the preview on you can see that it's now offset to the outside of the shape. All we need to do is to bring it to the inside of the shape. So I'm going to start to decrease the offset value until I move it into position and that's a pretty good position for it. Now your values are going to be a little bit different depending on the size shape you start with and it doesn't really matter. You just need to get this look. I don't want to have to tell you that you make a circle that's 200 by 200 or anything because it's just not that set in concrete. You can make it any size that you like provided it looks good then it's good. Now we're going to put the dots or the holes in our button so I'm going to click here and add a new fill and I want this fill to be black so I'm just going to target black as my fill color. Now obviously I filled the whole shape and I really just want a small hole for my button but I can do that again using the distort and transform. With this fill layer selected I'll choose effect, distort and transform and then transform. This time the size of the shape is going to have to be really quite small so I'm thinking something like 10% of my button size and this is my hole. 
but the hole in the button, I need four of them and this is not a good position for it, but I can drag the horizontal slider in a negative direction and I think probably minus 45 is going to be good. So let's just set that to minus 45 and this one then again at minus 45. So just use the same values for whatever you put in here and click OK. And now I'm just going to duplicate this one and instead of using minus 45 and minus 45, I'm just going to double click on the transform here, preview it, and I'm going to set different values. Um, this time I'm going to do 45 and minus 45 because that's going to give me my second hole in my button. I'm going to transform this one, well duplicate it first, and then transform it as well. And this time I'm going to use, well let's just turn the preview on so we can see it. This time I'm going to use 45 and 45. And then we've got one more transformation, one more duplicate and transformation to do. So I'm thinking that probably this is the one I want. Yep, that's it. This one's minus 45 and 45. Now this is giving us our fills, which so far is what we want. We're going to make these transparency masks very soon, but I want a little bit of a shadow under this, so I'm going to take the first of these fills and I'm going to duplicate it again. I'm going to take the one immediately under it. These two are identical, so this is these two are identical fills here. I'm going to take this one and I'm just going to make it a darker blue color. And then I'm going to transform it and I don't want to change this transformation. I want to take where it is right now and move it just a little bit relative to where it is. So I'm going to target the fill and choose Effect, Distort and Transform, Transform. This time I'm asked if I want to apply a new effect, which is what I do. Let's turn Preview on and I'm just going to move this about five points horizontally and vertically relative to the original spot and you can see this shape is appearing here. I'm going to do that with every pair of black fills. So I'm going to take this black fill, duplicate it, take the second version of it, apply the blue color to it, Effect, Distort and Transform, Transform, apply the new effect, and just move it five points from where it was previously. Turn on Preview so that I can see what I'm doing and click OK. Now I've got two more to do. Duplicate it, choose the second one, apply the blue color to it and now transform it. And one more. So now I've got all my little shadows in. Now what I want to do is to create these black fills, just the black fills as potential knockouts or transparent areas. And to do that I have to fill with black and I'm going to set the opacity of each of these to zero. So I'm going to open my fill appearance, click on opacity, set it to zero and go and do the next one. Now the change that we're seeing so far is that the black is disappearing and the blue is coming to the forefront. It's not exactly what we want but it's going to work perfectly when we go and create a knockout for these. So now all my blacks have been hidden because they're black filled but fully transparent. Now I'm going to click on Path and I want to create each of these black filled dots which all have their opacity set to zero. I want to create them as a mask and I do that using the Transparency panel, Window, Transparency. Now if you're not seeing these options at the bottom of the panel, you'll need to click this Fly Out and choose Show Options. There's Hide and Show Options. At the moment I'm seeing hide because they're shown, so I've just hidden them. You can see that it shows 
show options. And what I want to do is to create a knockout group. So I just click this until I get the check mark on knockout group. And now the black areas are see through and we can put something behind them if we want to. To finish off, I'm going to add a drop shadow to this shape. So again, I'm going to select the path and I'm going to choose Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow. I'm going to preview this so I can see what it's looking like. And you can see that it's a black shadow. That's probably not the color that I want. I think I would like a sort of neutral, browny sort of gray shadow would be a better choice. And so I'm going to go with that and click OK. So now we have our button and it's see-through. We can go ahead now and create that as a symbol that we can use. I'm going to select my button and I have the Symbols panel open here. Again, I could get to it by choosing Window and then Symbols. I'm just going to drag and drop the button in as a new symbol and click OK. And now I can delete it from my workspace. I'm going to create a filled area that is the size of my artboard. So I'm just going to add a sort of, well, let's go for this pale green color. And I'm just going to click File and Scripts because I have a script that automatically fills the background for me with a shape that is the size of the artboard. So let's go to my Layers palette. I can find it here. There's my shape. And now I'm just going to apply this green color to it. I'm going to lock this so it doesn't move, add a new layer. And onto this new layer, we're going to use the symbol sprayer to spray this symbol. I'm going to click here on the symbol sprayer, make sure I target my button. And now I can spray my buttons onto my workspace. Now the buttons are coming in very, very large. So let's go and get the Symbol Sizer tool. And I'm going to hold the Alt key with the Symbol Sizer so I can just size these symbols down so they're much smaller. Let's go and get the Symbol Shifter tool because that allows me to shift these symbols. I just want to shift these out of the way so that I can work with them independently of each other and so that we can see the transparency behind them. Now, having created blue buttons, you can see that as they have been scaled in size, the holes are being scaled as well as all of the other effects. And so that makes a really good reason for using the symbol library for creating these shapes. Let's go and select now the Symbol Stainer tool. This allows us to recolor a symbol. I'm going to select a bright red here and now click on one of these buttons. And when I do, the color is going to be applied to it. Now my machine's doing a lot of things right now, so it's a bit on the slow side. It usually works a lot faster than this and it will work faster for you as well. I've selected the purple color now and I'm just going to click on the button shape to apply the purple color to it. There are other features of the Symbol Sprayer tool that you can use to get even richer effects. But this is the basis of creating a button using a single shape and just altering features of the button in the Appearance panel saving it as a symbol and then spraying it into the document and being able to resize and recolor it from there. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Illustrator, Lightroom and a whole lot more.